Hi everybody, Inventor Billy. This is Jay Maserati. I've been enjoying the website for about a month or so and thought it was about time for me to contribute some lessons or, you know, some uh, videos. Uh, I saw in the lesson requests section the uh, request for Tattooed Love Boys, uh, which is one of my favorite solos, uh, favorite guitar players, James Honeyman Scott, so I thought that would be one I would start with. Uh, the song came out when I was about 13 years old and it blew me away like a lot of guitar players just this guy playing guitar very instinctive very physical um, but sweet you know sweet sounding solos and uh, he could play very melodic and then he could play something that was very aggressive like Tattoo Love Boys which was uh, my mark of a great guitar player so I had to sit down and figure it out all those years ago and played it throughout the years and kind of uh, had to dust it off again so uh, forgive me if I'm forgetting the sequence of the parts, but I think from you'll get the gist of the solo from what I play here. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, what he's playing behind the band is just a like a D shape at the ninth fret. He's doing a little arpeggio. <laughs> and then a F shape at the tenth fret. Basically, he plays that behind the band because uh, in an interview somewhere, he said something about uh, the fact that he wasn't very good at time signatures and they were always playing these really wild time signatures. I think Tattoo Love Boys is something like 11 sixteenths or something really whacked like that. So he just instinctively played something behind the rest of the band, uh, which is another testament to what a good a natural musician he was, just the feeling of being able to play off the other players. Um, he also used the clone theory, the electroharmonix pedal, which gave him some unique ringy tones to uh, his clean sound. Kind of had a doubled chorus effect. All right, uh, enough about that. Let's go on to the what leads up to the solo, which are the bar chords, the uh, A sharp down to the G, A sharp A and G. What needs to be said about that section is that how staccato and uh, it's like a, an insistent Morse code tapping on your brain. Da 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 da, which is uh, evident throughout the whole song. It's very piercing, uh, very staccato. Like I said, like Morse code. All right, the jump off part for the solos is that that, that uh, bar A chord. I'm gonna say here, coming down to the. 14th fret, I'm going to just bar across the B, G, and the D strings here. I'm going to kind of give it an upstroke like this. Okay. Next uh, pattern goes down to the 12th fret and does the same thing. So you're getting. You'll notice if you watch the video that he does the. Pete Townsend uh, windmill with his arm, which will uh, give you some sliced fingers if you try it <laughs> without any experience. But anyways, okay. After that, go down to the 17th fret, bar across the B in the in the D strings right here. You can see that. Start by plucking the B string, then pulling off from the 21st fret. One more time, I'll show you that. Next phrase just slides down a couple of frets to the 15th and does. Okay, so those two phrases together are. Okay, so put together we have. Okay, we did that much so far. The next one I play, the way I play it is up here at the ninth fret. I just do a D, D uh, shape here and really strum it really fast. And I add the pinky here, like a sus four. The next 
phrase. Let's get us the E. It's the uh, B, G, and the D strings at the 12th fret harmonics. So together. All right, next phrase goes down on the neck. Okay, for the end part of the solo, ran out of uh, space on the memory card, sorry about that. I come down to the um, third fret and basically bend this G up a whole step. And give it that quick little strum there. So once again. Or you can do. Then the next little scream part is 15th fret B string, bend up into uh, this 12th fret on the E string here. Once again. And of course the signature dive bomb at the end of the song, you just kind of pop in a harmonic at the 12th. And then using a the selector switch, which I don't have here on this guitar, he uses a selector switch on the Gibson. He rolls the volume off of the bridge pickup completely down to zero. He has a selector switch set on the, the bridge pickup. And when he hits that, he reaches up, grabs the selector switch, and toggles it back and forth really fast. And it's actually, to get this in timing with the song um, is really kind of difficult. But he does it so fast, it gives it kind of a bionic guitar sound, which is really cool. And of course, he dives that and kind of bends the neck as he goes into it. So what I do if I'm playing a Strat, I'll just I'll pop that, and then I'll give it a string scrape. Something to that effect, or I'll hit a whammy bar. Which is kind of the same, but uh, not quite as dramatic as that bionic guitar effect. So I usually try to play a Gibson when I'm doing this solo, but I just don't have one right available right now. But anyways, that's Tattooed Love Boys. Hope you guys knock yourself out learning it and ha have a good time. James Honeyman Scott was a great, great guitar player. Uh, he'll be sorely missed. A lot of potential that we never got to see. Tattooed Love Boys.